Y'all ready for this? Today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the skincare brand Naturium. This has been highly requested from you guys. And I am not sponsored by this brand or affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. If you wanna check the description box, there'll be timestamps. So I'm just gonna get into it and go one by one. Product number one is their multi-peptide moisturizer. This retails for $19. It is a peptide moisturizer. I've reviewed so many of these over the years. They're really common in the skincare marketplace. This particular one isn't necessarily unique. It has um, palmitoil, oil, tripeptide 5, tripeptide 1, and tetrapeptide 7. Now this complex uh, palmetto oil peptides. It's what underscores Matrixyl 3000, if you've ever heard of that trademark ingredient. Basically, a collection of peptides, and industry studies suggest that these peptides perhaps get into the skin and stimulate collagen production. But peptides in skincare products, they also work as humectants, meaning they hold water and help increase hydration of the top dead layer of the skin, improving the look of wrinkles and fine lines. Now this product also has 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid is a form of vitamin C that uh, is thought to be more stable, but it can cause irritation for people. So be aware of that. This product has uh, some magnolia bark extracts, which you know are thought to be rich in polyphenols or whatever. Um, it also has cacay seed oil and um, microalgae extract, which is another type of humectant. Otherwise, you know, this is this is a typical moisturizer. All right, product number two is their niacinamide serum 12% and zinc 2%. This is a serum for $16 that has niacinamide. Niacinamide is an ingredient that can help calm down redness, irritation, it can help with oiliness. And there's also some evidence that it can help reduce yellowing in the skin. It has antioxidant effects and has therefore an anti-aging effect. However, 12% uh, is quite high. The studies on niacinamide use maximum of 5%. And we know that higher percentage of ingredients doesn't necessarily mean more efficacious or better. And in many cases, it's more irritating when, when products have a very high percentage strength of an active ingredient. And that, that can be the case with niacinamide. So this isn't a necessary product, a 12% niacinamide serum. You can find niacinamide in moisturizer at uh, a acceptable percentage strength, less likely to cause irritation. You don't need a separate serum. Now the zinc PCA piece of this product, zinc PCA is in a lot of moisturizers as is. It's anti-inflammatory and has some antifungal properties and is a good ingredient for people who deal with seborrheic dermatitis. It has been shown to be helpful for that. Product number three, their vitamin C complex serum. This is a $20 vitamin C serum. It has ascorbic acid, which you guys know from my videos on vitamin C, is a form of vitamin C that uh, in theory gets into the skin and helps boost up collagen production. Unfortunately, it's not very stable and it's difficult to formulate in such a way that it actually gets into the skin. And so it, it causes a lot of headache for manufacturers. Typically what, uh, what has been shown to be the best is if you have L-ascorbic acid stabilized with ferulic acid and vitamin E, such as what is in the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic. That product is actually, you know, probably the most evidence-based vitamin C product on the market. Um, anyways, this product has ascorbic acid, but it doesn't have uh, ferulic acid or vitamin E. It also has, a um, vitamin C salt, sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Now this is a lot more stable than ascorbic acid, but we don't have the data that it actually does what the ascorbic acid does. You know, it needs to actually get in and stimulate collagen synthesis and all that. So we, don't, we really don't have much data on, on that salt. Um, anyways, problematic ingredients in this, there are a lot actually. Pineapple, papaya, and mango fruit extracts can be particularly irritating. I mean, have you ever put pineapple juice on your skin? It's pretty irritating. And whenever I drink pineapple juice, I get a lot of irritation around my mouth. Um, same thing with papaya. Uh, papaya has fruit enzymes that can be actually pretty irritating. Uh, but the main problematic ingredient in this is gold. Gold is not a good ingredient in skincare and skincare manufacturers need to stop putting gold in stuff. Gold, you know, they'll claim it's anti-inflammatory um, you know, as an antioxidant, and they'll make all these bold claims that it has anti-aging properties, but it, in fact, the, the, none of that is substantiated when it comes to topical gold. Topical gold can be incredibly irritating and sensitizing. Remember, one of the most common allergens worldwide is nickel allergy, and gold oftentimes 
has nickel in it, gold alloys. So if you have any nickel allergy, which many, 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 many people do, uh, this could cause problems. Plus it's abrasive, could cause a lot of irritation. Not a fan of the gold in the product. So this, you know, uh, this is offering you nothing. All right, the next product is azelaic acid emulsion 10%. Azelaic acid is a dicarboxylic acid that is naturally present on our skin. Actually, a little yeast that lives in our skin makes it. Um, but when applied topically, it can be helpful for a variety of things, namely acne, clogged pores, hyperpigmentation, redness, and rosacea. Um, and in prescription forms, you can get it in either 15 or 20%. And that's where the data is in, in those higher percentage strengths. Um, but cosmetic manufacturers, they can't put 15 or 20, they can only put 10% in their products. Um, whether or not 10% works to do these things, honestly, we don't have the data to back that up, but it seems like it, it helps in terms of reducing redness, irritation, and it's a good ingredient for hyperpigmentation. The other advantage of azelaic acid is that um, it's, it's safe to use in pregnancy. So women who are, you know, during pregnancy, they really struggle to find products that um, will help with their acne that are pregnancy safe. And azelaic acid is one such ingredient. This also has niacinamide in it, a good ingredient for again, skin brightening, has an anti-aging effect, and can also help reduce uh, hyperpigmentation. I'm not sure what the percentage of niacinamide in this is. It also has oats, which are rich in uh, beta-glucans and are moisturizing. And um, overall, I would say this product is not too bad. Uh, it's a little drying, but that's to be expected with has to be expected with azelaic acid, it can be pretty drying. Um, I actually, I'm almost finished with this. I've used it, I, you can use it, ideally you would use it twice a day, uh, in the morning and in the evening. And in the morning you wanna put it on, allow it to set up first, and then apply your sunscreen on over it. And then in the evening, after you've cleansed your skin, you can put this on as a moisturizer. Uh, you can put it on to damp skin, that will help the ingredients get in a little bit better. And this, to reiterate, this product is gonna be helpful for people who, are, who struggle with acne, who struggle with hyperpigmentation, who struggle with redness, and who struggle with rosacea. Um, so yeah, this product, not too bad. What about azelaic topical acid, 10%? Plus niacinamide and vitamin C. This actually uses potassium azaloyl diglycinate. Now this is a more novel cosmeceutical ingredient. It basically takes azelaic acid and complexes it with glycine and um, potassium hydroxide. Uh, it reacts it together. And basically you get a water soluble form of azelaic acid. So I think that probably makes it easier to formulate into different products, especially one that's going to be more lightweight. Um, and in theory, that glycine component of this, mod this derivative of azelaic acid makes the product a lot more moisturizing. This product also has niacinamide, again, a skin brightening ingredient that's anti-inflammatory, and it has ethyl ascorbic acid, a vitamin C derivative that, you know, whether or not it, it does anything for the skin is questionable, but it's in there. So this product, you guys, beware. It makes my face itch like, like I've walked through fiberglass. It is the most uncomfortable sensation. I have tried using this numerous times, uh, you know, to damp skin, not to damp skin, to a dry face, to a moisturized face, to a, you know. It is a miserable sensation for me. I do not know what it is about this product that makes me itch. It is, I, I can't stand it. I have pretty tough skin, so to speak. Not much in the way of topicals causes irritation for me. And I've never really had a product cause facial itch. Other than that, I mean, that is pretty, pretty profound. So I would not recommend that. Product number six is the BHA Liquid Exfoliant 2%. Look familiar to anybody? Very familiar, yeah. Looks an awful lot like the Polish Choice uh, BHA liquid, the Polish Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. You see what they did there? They just moved the 2% to the back of the to the back of the bus, and boom! All of a sudden, you don't have a uh, you don't have a what is it? Um, copyright infringement? I don't know. Anyways, 
Uh, this is a salicylic acid uh, leave-on product, 2% BHA, helpful for oiliness, pores, and it can be helpful for hyperpigmentation. It's an exfoliant. It's actually an exfoliant that uh, is good for people who deal with hyperpigmentation and have a deeper skin tone because it can kind of put the brakes on some of the processes that lead to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well as lift up, lift up any uh, hyperpigmentation from the top you know, layers of the skin and exfoliate it out. It's also, like I said, if I didn't already mention, good for people who have acne, closed comedones in particular, or, or whiteheads, because it is comedolytic. It actually focuses down in the oil glands. Anyways, this product, unfortunately, has citrus fruit extracts, which are basically, can be, you know, basically fragrance. They have compounds in them that you find in, in fragrances, um, citronellol and what have you. And, that's a problem for people who have confirmed fragrance allergy and the citrus fruit extracts can make this product a lot more irritating. Salicylic acid can be irritating, can be drying. For me personally, I didn't have any issue using this or you know discomfort. It definitely didn't cause that itch. It kind of just felt like water going on the skin, truthfully. Um, but I've got to tell you guys, with those citrus fruit extracts in there, I would say buyer beware. This is $20. Personally, um, I recommend you guys splurge the $9.50 extra and go with the Polish Choice 2% uh, BHA liquid exfoliant. That is a great product and it doesn't have the citrus extracts in it. I definitely think it's worth the $9.50 extra for the Polish Choice product. Not sponsored by Paula either. Um, I just, you know, I've always recommended that product and I think it's superior to this. It doesn't have the citrus fruit extracts, but that's my, my opinion. All right, let's talk about this bag of tricks. <laughs> The Vitamin C Super Serum Plus. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is like, you know when you're cooking and you put all your scraps in a bowl? That's kind of what this is like. It's got way too much going on. Way too much going on. Niacinamide and glutathione. So niacinamide, again, it's an antioxidant, so it's glutathione. That's going to be helpful for reducing the burden of oxidative stress in the skin that can contribute to hyperpigmentation, irritation, and inflammation. It's also got ascorbic acid, vitamin C, but it's not stable. You know, there's no, um, there's no uh, vitamin E or any of that going on. Plus, it's got retinol in it, plus salicylic acid, plus why not throw in another in there? Gold. Oh my gosh, way too much going on. I mean, for people who um, are using retinol, especially getting to know retinol, pairing it with um, these other ingredients can just really increase the irritation. The combination of all of these ingredients together is suspicious. Uh, I really would caution you against this product. It's very likely to cause you a lot of irritation because of all of these different active ingredients. Whenever you start using multiple active ingredients, you do run into the risk of diminishing returns. Now there are products out there that are formulated with like vitamin C and retinol um, together, uh, you know, products that are formulated with an AHA and retinol. I mean, it can be done, but when you get this many actives all in one tube, plus you throw gold in there, it's way too much going on. So I would definitely caution you against this and um, you know, especially for those of you who have deeper skin tones and deal with a lot of hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, this is not the vitamin C for you because it's likely to cause a lot of irritation, especially with that gold in there that can worsen your hyperpigmentation. So I don't recommend that. All right, the next product is their Tranexamic Topical Acid 5%. This is a $20 serum that has tranexamic acid. Now, tranexamic acid is a, something that we actually give by mouth to treat melasma. It works quite well, actually, for melasma. Applied topically to the skin, the data is kind of mixed for melasma and hyperpigmentation. Some studies suggest it is helpful. However, the devil is in the details. It's very difficult to formulate it properly in such a way that it actually gets into the skin and does anything. Some studies suggest that it is helpful for redness. So if you deal with post-acne redness, post-acne dark marks, you may find that tranexamic acid applied topically is helpful. But again, with the caveat that you're kind of up to the mercy of the formulator that they did their, they did diligence by the product and uh, you know the tranexamic acid is effective. This product also has kojic acid, a skin brightening ingredient. I've got videos on. Um, and it's also got licorice root, another skin brightening ingredient that has anti-inflammatory properties and can help calm down redness. This didn't have any suspicious ingredients or problematic ingredients in it. It's 20 bucks. 
All right, the next product is kind of strange, you guys. Um, it's the Fermented Camellia Creamy Cleansing Oil. This is a cleansing oil. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the cleansing oils and cleansing balms. I mean, whatever, they're kind of reiterations of the same, same principle. Anyways, for removing water-resistant sunscreen, mascara, I just find that it's a gentler way to break up films of cosmetic residue off the skin before cleansing it off. And I really like using them on my eyelashes to remove mascara because it kind of conditions them. I was pretty excited to try this out, but it is weird, you guys. It's not like a cleansing balm or oil I've ever tried before. And I think the issue with this, here I'll show you what it looks like. It's just like a clear, clear consistency, colorless clear. I don't think this really has much in the way of emulsifiers. I'm not really seeing a lot of them on the ingredient list. And when you put a little water on the skin after rubbing this over the surface, it doesn't really generate that kind of creamy lather that we're used to with cleansing balms and cleansing oils. It doesn't emulsify. And putting this on the skin and rubbing it around, it kind of feels like you're putting on another skincare product or makeup or something and that it's actually creating a film. It just doesn't seem to work into that lather that you typically get with a cleansing oil or cleansing balm. That's just my experience using it. Otherwise the ingredients seem fine. I just don't, I didn't find it to be particularly effective at lifting up that cosmetic residue from the water resistant sunscreen. Uh, in fact, I used, you guys know I use tinted sunscreens a fair amount. And I noticed that there was still uh, the tint left behind, the residue from the tint left behind with this, um, including following it with a second cleanser. So I don't know, I, you know, I would recommend um, springing, this product's 20 bucks. I happen to currently be rather fond of the Paula's Choice Cleansing Balm. Again, not sponsored by Paula. It's $8 more, much better. It doesn't leave the skin feeling filmy. It leaves it moisturized and cleansed. Highly recommend that. Or Carolyn Hiron's uh, Pixie Double Cleanse, also a great cleansing balm um, with a creamy cleanser second step. Yeah, those are better products in my opinion than this. That's just my preference as far as what I like. I find with cleansing balms and cleansing oils, people have what, you know, they, they kind of like what they like and they don't like what they don't like. So you may end up trying this and liking it. But personally, I didn't find it to be particularly effective at doing what it's supposed to do. And it felt kind of weird and just wasn't quite right. Um, speaking of second cleanse, I also tried this, uh, which is a hard pass for, for a recommendation, the fermented rice enzyme cleanser. And it's got these like micro powders in it that are pretty abrasive. So I don't recommend anything abrasive for skincare because uh, it can create little tiny areas of micro trauma and the moisture barrier lead to more water loss and irritation. And it's not a very precise way to exfoliate this kind of mechanical exfoliation with these little micro powders or whatever. It also felt very rough around like my cheeks. So I don't, I didn't care for that personally. The ingredients though, aside from that abrasive stuff, uh, the ingredients otherwise are fine. Product number 11, the Retinol Complex Serum. Now, when it comes to what I recommend for retinols, I always encourage you guys to stick with brands that have been doing retinol for a long time. They have a lot of R&D behind them. Uh, because, you know, brands like Johnson & Johnson and L'Oreal, Johnson & Johnson especially, they've been doing retinol for so long. I mean, they've really got a lot of clinical-based studies and actual people, but I do strongly recommend their retinols. Um, I just can't be as confident in newer brands. Like, have they done the R&D? Hard to say. Um, anyways. Uh, this product also has Bakuchiol in it. Now, Bakuchiol, people get all excited about, but, you know, people think that it's like the next, like, an alternative to retinol, and it's, there's really not the data for that, like, at all. Bakuchiol is an antioxidant. It can stabilize retinol, um, so perhaps it helps retinol function better, but it also can be irritating. People can develop contact dermatitis to it, so be aware of that. Um, so that's the retinol complex serum. Then there's the quadruple hyaluronic acid serum. This was not too bad. I tried this out myself, uh, 5%. This is $16. 
It's got four forms of hyaluronic acid, very low, low, medium, and high molecular, high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Now hyaluronic acid, naturally present in the human body, it's a humectant, it binds onto water quite robustly. And when you put it on the skin, uh, it can bind the water, pull water into the top dead layer and just kind of smooth out wrinkles and fine lines. It has moisturizing properties. However, if you don't pair it with occlusive ingredients like shea butter, petrolatum, silicones, uh, what will end up happening is the water will just, that it holds on there, it pulls in there, will evaporate and pull more water out of your skin and lead to more dryness. You especially can encounter this issue if you live in a dry climate, which I don't. As a matter of fact, it is so steamy right now. The windows are like <laughs> fogging up because we've been having a lot of rain, but anyways. So a product like this, you need to put moisturizer on over to kind of seal in that hydration sponge of all these hyaluronic acid forms. Um, the other thing I will point out about hyaluronic acid serums that I mentioned in my video talking about, is it possible to be allergic to hyaluronic acid? Short answer, no. But you can develop quite a bit of irritation to it. Some people seem to be more vulnerable to this than others because anytime you are bringing that water into the skin, you're increasing penetration of other active ingredients. That can lead to a lot of irritation. And some of these lower molecular weight forms of hyaluronic acid that can penetrate into the skin a little bit deeper, in theory, they may um, stimulate inflammatory processes that are triggered in the setting of injury, skin injury and healing. So that too could be another potential explanation why some people, um, their skin is easily irritated by hyaluronic acid. Personally, I've never had any issue, you know, I can use eight ways to sideways hyaluronic acid. Seems to work quite well for my skin. But remember, I also live in a very humid climate. Um, so, you know, I, it probably works better for me here. There are so many hyaluronic acid serums. Like what, what else can I tell you guys other than be aware of the fact that it may cause irritation because there's so many forms of hyaluronic acid in it and some people are easily irritated by it. All right, the next product is $16, if I didn't already say that. The next product is the Plant Ceramide Rich Cream. This is a moisturizer for $25. It's got shea butter, which is occlusive, will slow down water loss out of the skin. It's got squalane, an emollient, and it's got uh, phospholipids, sphingolipids, and ceramides, which are helpful for the moisture barrier. It appears to be free of fragrance. Uh, $25. I didn't personally try this, but there's nothing that stands out as necessarily problematic on the ingredient list. Product number 14 is one I also tried, the Niacinamide Cleansing Jelly 3%. Uh, $18 cleanser, wash your face. Uh, not much I can say about this. Blindfold me, I can't tell a cleanser like this from any other on the market. So if you wanna drop 18 bucks on this, by all means, there's nothing magic about it. Uh, yes, it washes the face. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I can say. Product number 15, the Intense Overnight Sleeping Cream. Sleeping cream or sleep mask is code for another moisturizer. This one's 25 bucks. Um, it's got uh, triglycerides, it's got squalane, again, that emollient, um, hyaluronic acid, a humectant. It's got the basic components of a moisturizer. It also has honey in it. So those of you who are looking for vegan products, this would not meet criteria. Honey um, is, uh, it has antibacterial properties, has healing properties, it's rich in antioxidants, and is a wonderful humectant. Uh, medical grade honey is actually uh, very useful in healing wounds and is used a fair amount. So that, that's a logical ingredient. Don't have anything you know positive or negative to say about it. Uh, it is a moisturizer you could use you know, in the nighttime. Even though it says sleeping cream, you certainly could use this as a, a daytime moisturizer, of course, Sorry, I had to get another battery. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, what were we talking about? The jelly, oh, the sleep cream. You could wear it uh, you know, under your sunscreen during the daytime. It's a moisturizer, $25. The multi-peptide eye cream, very similar to the multi-peptide moisturizer. Uh, except this product does not have that 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid that can be irritating. I've told you guys ad nauseum that you do not need a separate eye cream. Uh, the moisturizer you put on your face should be just fine around your eyes. Um, so I would say this is definitely unlikely to be worth your $16, just to be truthful. 
because honestly, you should be able to use any moisturizer around your eyes. Um, all right, number 17 is the Retinol Complex Cream. This is very similar to the Retinol Complex Serum, only it's gonna be in a cream form versus a lightweight, you know, watery lotion of a serum. Same type of ingredients, retinol. Again, I can't speak to the efficacy of their retinol because, you know, who knows what they've done as far as R&D. Uh, it's also got hoochie coochie bakuchi all in there. Uh, and I've talked about that already. Not an alternative to retinol, but maybe stabilizes the retinol. You can develop contact dermatitis to it. 20 bucks. Um, you know, if you want to do one of these retinols, you have to ask yourself, do I want a lightweight serum or do I want a cream? I can't make that decision for you. All right, the next product is niacinamide 3% essence. This is $16. It's a liquid 3% niacinamide. Uh, so you could put this on in the morning, I would recommend, underneath sunscreen, of course. That way you have the advantage of the niacinamide, which is an antioxidant. Also helps with hyperpigmentation and redness. It'll help protect you against free radical damage from sun and pollution exposure that you see throughout the day. You can also use it at nighttime. It's gonna be lightweight, so it's a kind of product that you would want to layer on underneath a moisturizer and or sunscreen. Uh, and it's 3%. Now 3% is a reasonable concentration, not too high, you know, so unlikely to cause irritation. Although some people are very sensitive to niacinamide and are irritated by any percentage. Uh, number 19 is taking the percentage down a notch in a mist form. I actually tried this myself, uh, the 2% niacinamide mist. Spray it onto your face first thing in the morning and then put your sunscreen on over it. That's kind of how, that's the approach you should take when you want to incorporate an antioxidant into your skincare routine, uh, is to put it on the skin first thing in the morning allow it to set up and then put your sunscreen on over it. So that's kind of what I was going for here because I didn't want to, you know, buy every single version of niacinamide from this brand. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like, product number next is the Mixed Nutrient Rich Cleanser, $16. I do not recommend this because, I mean, it's fine if you want to use it, but like, my biggest problem with this is that it claims to be free of fragrance. As a matter of fact, every product is like free of, Fragrance free, and they also put this little note like, we value transparency ingredients. Okay, well why are you calling this fragrance free when it's got bergamot oil in it? Like, <laughs> you don't have to dig too far on the internet. Find any one of the fragrance reviewer, the perfume community on YouTube, and then be going on and on and on about bergamot oil. It is a perfume. <laughs> oil of bergamot is the quintessential fragrance ingredient. Uh, and it also has a bunch of citrus, uh, citrus extracts in it, which are also fragrance. Um, so, you know, for that reason, that always bothers me because with, when it comes to fragrance, you know, it's a personal choice to use it or lose it. And as I've said in many videos, it's less of an issue and things that you rinse off of the skin. I use many products that have fragrance that, you know, especially in cleansers. However, it's the claim they make that it is free of fragrance, and it's obviously not. So for people who have true fragrance allergy, um, they're gonna buy this thinking that it's safe, and it's absolutely not. So I hate stuff like that, especially when you go out of your way to say that you are value transparency or whatever in ingredients. Yeah, I mean, that really bothered me, so. $16, no. Um, all right, the Niacinamide Gel Cream. This is a product that is going to be probably something people with oily skin like. Um, it's got niacinamide, yet again, a, an ingredient that, to remind you, is an antioxidant, can help calm down redness, helpful for hyperpigmentation, and also is helpful for people who have oily skin. Um, and it has been shown to uh, reduce overall oiliness. And this is likely a lightweight gel cream, kind of similar to like that Aveeno Oat Gel moisturizer that I love so much. It's formulated with dimethicone, which tends to go over well for people who have oily skin because it's, um, it's a good ingredient for reducing water loss out of the skin, but it allows for the evaporation of sweat so it doesn't leave the skin looking shiny um, and it doesn't feel greasy or heavy. So that is that, $20. Um, and that's what I can tell you about that. Product number 22 is the Marine Hyaluronic Water Cream. And it's got 
uh, red algae extract, a wonderful humectant. So this is something that uh, can help with skin hydration, moisture, moisture retention. And it also has sodium hyaluronate, another humectant. This is $20. Doesn't appear to have any fragrance in it. So if you like a product that is more of a lightweight consistency, and you're looking for something that is humectant rich, you know, this would probably be it, $20. All right, then we have a hyaluronic acid 2% essence. $16. So if you want to mist yourself or splash yourself with hyaluronic acid, just do so uh, bef before putting on a moisturizer on over to trap in that hydration. Otherwise, the hyaluronic acid that you splash on, it's just going to, you know, lead to more water loss out of the skin. Squalane oil, $16. Squalane is a lightweight oil. It's an emollient. It will smooth down skin cell edges, but oils as, by themselves, they're not very good moisturizers. They don't reduce water loss out of the skin. Virgin Marula face oil, same thing, $16. Marula has got a lot of antioxidants in it in theory. I don't chase after oils. People like them because they kind of give an instant gratif gratification piece and that your skin looks really nice when you put an oil on it because it, the oils are emollients, they smooth down skin cell edges. But long term, they're just not very practical by themselves. Um, if you want to use an oil, use an oil. But like, let's not pretend that squalane oil and marula face oil is anything new and noteworthy. All right, moving on, the Alpha Arbutin Essence 1%. Um, I do not recommend this product. It has orange flower extract in it, which is fragrance. So for people who are looking to improve hyperpigmentation, which you presumably you are if you're using Alpha Arbutin, um, that fragrance can lead to more irritation. Um, Alpha Arbutin is a skin brightening ingredient. Um, it can be combined with other skin brightening ingredients. It's typically pretty well tolerated. This is $16. Vitamin C face oil, this is $25. It has tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. This, unlike ascorbic acid, is a lipid soluble form of vitamin C. So in theory, it actually gets into your skin better, but we don't actually have the clinical data to back it up as far as doing what you want it to do, act as an antioxidant, a skin brightening ingredient, and help with boosting up collagen production. So I say don't waste your time, energy on uh, tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate and sunflower seed oil, which is basically what this is. All right, number next is Alpha Arbutin Serum, another version of, so we had an essence at 1% and now we've got a serum at 2%. Um, alpha Arbutin, again, a skin brightening ingredient. However, this particular product I do not recommend. It's got lemon fruit extract. You want to avoid the citrus fruits if you have hyperpigmentation especially because not only can they be irritating, but depending on how they were made, which we'll never know, how they were processed, they could, in theory, although I doubt, it's doubtful, they could, in theory, have furocoumarins in them, which are compounds that make, that react with ultraviolet radiation, cause horrible rashes. Um, in theory, it shouldn't have that, but likewise, moving on, the mandelic topical acid, 12%. Mandelic acid is a great ingredient for people who have a deeper skin tone or looking for some gentle exfoliation to help improve hyperpigmentation. It's a alpha hydroxy acid, it's, it's a large in size. It not only helps exfoliate gently, but it's also helpful for um, improving moisture retention. Uh, this product, however, again, with the citrus extracts, which can cause a lot of irritation, I would recommend instead Wish Trend has a mandelic acid, I forget what they call it, water, blah, 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 kind of very similar to this. Choose that instead. Um, all right, product number 30 is the glycolic acid resurfacing solution, 8%. Glycolic acid is a smaller alpha hydroxy acid than mandelic, so it penetrates a little bit deeper, a little bit more intense, if you will, exfoliation, but still pretty gentle, helpful for hyperpigmentation uh, and improving overall skin texture and smoothness and long-term can help impart better moisture retention. So the 8% solution is $20. Now, when it comes to glycolic acid, don't get hung up on the percentage necessarily because percentages, they, they don't under, always underscore efficacy of a glycolic acid because it boils down to how the product is pH'd as well and you know the inactives in the formulation overall. Um, so there's that. They also have a resurfacing gel, which you should already know the answer to this at this point from watching the video if you watched. If you're skipping around, then spoiler alert, I don't recommend because this one's got lemon and orange in it. So stay away from the citrus stuff. If you want a good glycolic acid-based product, stick with Alpha Care. I love Alpha Care. I'm not, again, sponsored by them or anything. You get them at Ulta. 
Um, alpha skincare, uh, they do alpha hydroxy acids quite well. Uh, their products are free of fragrance, pretty affordable, and I believe they're cruelty free too. So don't sleep on Alpha Care when it comes to if you're looking to incorporate glycolic acid into your routine. I have a video, by the way, all about how to exfoliate. So check that out if you're like, whoa, she's covering a lot. You, you know, you don't have to take it all in at once. Next product is the polyhydroxy acid topical acid. That's a lot of acid. 12%. This product is a, a blend of polyhydroxy acids, gluconolactone and lactobionic acid. And it's also got mandelic acid, which is an alpha hydroxy acid. Now this Mambo Combo polyhydroxy acid, mandelic, this is a type of product that is going to be useful for people who have sensitive skin, who are looking for some kind of exfoliation to smooth out the skin surface and improve skin texture. These ingredients also can help improve moisture retention. They're very, very gentle. Uh, $12. For me personally, you know, I didn't try this product, obviously. I'm just telling you about the ingredients. Um, but the one I always recommend that's quite good is the Inkyless polyhydroxy acid. Um, I think it's actually less expensive than this. Last but certainly not least, oh lord, the retinoid face oil, you guys. It's got that stupid hydroxypinacolone retinoate. We covered this in the ordinary retinols. This is a this is a cash grab ingredient. Uh, this is not retinol. Uh, there's like one small study using it. It's kind of inconclusive actually, and it's it's a cosmetic ingredient that really is not data driven. We don't have any evidence that it boosts collagen production or helps improve wrinkles or fine lines. Don't waste your time on hydroxypinacolone retinoate, um, HPR. It, you know, it's what the ordinary duped us with. Do not fall for this. And avocado oil, which there's nothing wrong with avocado oil, but that's basically what you're paying for here. $25 for avocado oil. So those are all the products, you guys. Thank you for making it this far in the video or, you know, skipping around. I ain't mad at you uh, if you didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah, this brand, I don't know. I don't recommend it. I wasn't impressed with the products that I tried. They were underwhelming as far as a consumer preference point of view. The consistencies, the textures of a lot of the products were just not that nice. Uh, like I said, the cleansing oil was kind of filmy and didn't emulsify properly. The azelaic topical acid made my face itch. Uh, they do that thing where they take like niacinamide and they you know, do a cereal dilution of it into different bottles and sell you the same rendition of the same thing over and over again. I don't appreciate that. The fermented rice enzyme cleanser was very abrasive. I don't appreciate the fact that they, you know, go out of their way to make this claim that they value transparency when they blatantly <laughs> lie to you about a product being fragrance free when it adds the most obvious fragrance ingredient bergamot oil oil of bergamot which actually can cause a phytophotodermatitis although in in perfumes nowadays they filter that out but yeah it's probably that that bothered me i know there's a lot of controversy around the launch of this i'm not going to comment on that because i don't honestly i don't follow stuff like that so you can form your opinion on that. I'm sure you already have. Uh, but I did get a lot of requests to review this brand. So here it is. Again, I reiterate, it's not sponsored. I'm not affiliated with this company. But I know it's available at Target and I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about it. Comment below and if you guys have tried any of these products, it was heavily requested. So I hope this review was objective and helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.